the FCS Championship. We come to you from Frisco, Texas. The number one seed, a two-time defending champ, North Dakota State, goes for a three-peat against the Towson Tigers, who are seeking their first ever FCS Championship. And good afternoon, Anish Shroff, alongside former first-round pick Kelly Stauffer. When we look at these two teams, they're so similar in so many ways, and in fact, the matchup on the field, a lot like the Rose Bowl matchup we saw on New Year's Day. Yeah, if you like physical throwback football, you come to the right place. Both teams will huddle, which is slightly unusual. Physical downhill run game, and defensively, both teams think that every down is the most important down of the game. This is going to be a physical affair here this afternoon. The embodiment of that physicality is Towson running back Terrence West. <laughs> Quite simply, he has put up one of the greatest seasons by a running back in NCAA history. And quite simply, Terrence West is the reason that Towson is here. He runs behind his pads. He's a finisher in the red zone. He also has a quickness to bounce it outside and get big plays. But what I really like, Anish, he's a violent finisher of the football. He acts like he's offended when someone tries to tackle him. 2,400 plus yards. 41 total touchdowns, both FCS single season records. North Dakota State quarterback Brock Jensen doesn't quite have the gaudy numbers, but he's won more games than any quarterback at this level. That's the key stat for a quarterback. Yeah, and if you're wanting to win your third national championship in a row, you need to be great at the quarterback position, and Brock Jensen has been that. The thing that I like most about this young man is when the game is on the line, he's very poised in those clutch moments. He literally plays his best football. Let's meet the third member of our team, Kara Capuano, down on the field. Guys, special teams and turnovers. Those are the two gray areas that Towson head coach Rob Ambrose predicts will win this FCS championship. North Dakota State head coach Craig Bull agrees. He says that with two teams that are so similar on the field, the margin for victory is often very slim. One or two plays can decide a game. The biggest difference between Towson and North Dakota State experience Experience. The Tigers making their first trip to the FCS championship. The Bison have been here three straight years. Bull told us that athletes usually excel when they're in their routine. And the Bison, this team in particular, is very familiar with this big stage. Anish? Thank you, Kara. Craig Bull, the head coach for North Dakota State, coaching his final game for the Bison. He's set to become the next head coach at Wyoming. He's taking most of his staff with him so in a lot of ways kelly this is a last hurrah sort of game for the bison it's really interesting he said the most emotional part was actually seen senior day in the fargo dome a couple of weeks ago this is kind of business as usual but by the end of today it's going to be in a very emotional moment for that guy right there craig ball has a lot of respect for the man on the other sideline rob ambrose ambrose in his first two seasons, won just three games with Towson, 28-9 and nine over the last three years, won the Colonial in 2011, and this team has been battle-tested. They've been resilient in the postseason. They beat Eastern Illinois in the quarterfinals, being down 14-0 in that game. Trailed Eastern Washington by 10 with less than six minutes to play at the Inferno two weeks ago. Rallied to win with the backup quarterback, Connor Frazier. By far, Towson has had the tougher road to Frisco. It's interesting because North Dakota State is the two-time defending national champions. They've been tested kind of over time. This year, you're absolutely right. They haven't really had any close contests. Towson is battle-tested, and their run game is worthy of playing in any game anywhere. Both teams will try to impose their will, and there is Terrence West, number 28. Towson won the toss. They chose to defer. So North Dakota State will receive to start this game. The Bison looking to join Appalachian State as the only schools to win three consecutive FCS championships. It's a pro Bison crowd here in Frisco. A lot of these folks purchased their tickets for this game, at least the North Dakota State fans did, before the season even started. I don't know whether they call that experience or extreme confidence, but either way, 
They were exactly right. Their team is here to win potentially their third national championship in a row. The flags are blowing. It is a bit of a windy day here in Frisco. DJ Sovin to kick it off, and we are underway in the FCS championship. John Crockett lets it bounce out of the end zone. North Dakota State gets it at its own 25-yard line, and there is Brock Jensen, number 16, the winningest quarterback in FCS history. He's won two straight championships and was the MVP of the FCS championship game a year ago. And you really can't get more seasoned and tested as Brock Jensen is. Two national championships, got beat in a heartbreaking quarterfinal game his freshman year, so they're very, very good at that position. Two tight ends on first down. You'll see a lot of that from both teams. Ryan Smith gets the call. Little jet sweep there, and Smith out of bounds at the 41-yard line. It's a first down, a gain of 16. Smith injured his hamstring in the semifinal win, proclaimed good to go today. Yeah, and he looks very good on this, and this is really a tendency breaker. We're talking about a power run game downhill, and they give it to Ryan Smith on the fly sweep, and that certainly tested his hamstring, and it looked really good on that play. And now we've got our first flag of the game. He was covered up. Paul Sard, offense number 46, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards, still first down. That's Andrew Bonnet, the backup fullback. Jeff Flanagan, our referee, part of a Big South officiating crew. North Dakota State comes in with 23 straight wins. This is a team that opened the season with a win against Kansas State, who at the time was the defending Big 12 champ. This time they fake the fly sweep. Jensen throws to Bonnet, and he's upended by Donnell Lewis, the strong safety. And it's a gain of three. Donnell Lewis does a very good job coming up from his strong safety position and making a very good tackle. That's what head coach Ambrose told us last night when we talked with him is they have to do a much better job of tackling today than they did a couple of weeks ago against Eastern Washington. Towson without one of its starting corners, Jordan Love, the Georgia transfer, a first-team all-conference selection, suspended for this game. It's an NCAA suspension. First carry of the game for Sam Ojuri, who's run for 1,000 yards in three straight seasons, and he's driven back. Drew Sharipko and Lewis on the tackle, and it's third and long for North Dakota State. And that's really the trademark of Towson defensively is they want to penetrate the line of scrimmage. They have a lot of tackles for loss, a lot of sacks. They create a lot of negative plays, and it's exactly what they did on that play. Against that power run game, you have to get on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. North Dakota State tops in the nation in third down conversions. 56%. Jensen on third and long has a receiver open. And it's ruled incomplete. Kerry Woods, the target, could not come down with it. Fourth down. Towson is playing a single high safety, and it left man-to-man -man on the outside. Very well thrown, but Kerry Woods just doesn't collect the ball initially. He bats it around. They really doesn't have possession, and they're exactly right. That was tremendously well called on the field. Woods, a redshirt freshman from Bemidji, Minnesota, and that's a ball he's got to catch. Ben LeCompte on to punt it away for North Dakota State. Brian Dowling lets it bounce. And the Bison able to down it inside the 10-yard line. When we come back, we get our first look at the Towson offense and their record-setting running back.
That is Shroff, Kelly, Stauffer, Kara Capuano, the FCS championship game, North Dakota State, three and out on its opening drive. We'll see Towson and Terrence West, and the season West has had has been incredible. He set the FCS single season record for rushing yards and total touchdowns. Compare it to what Barry Sanders did at the FBS level. Sanders' 88 season is really considered the gold standard, the best season ever for a running back. West has a chance to catch Sanders with 218 yards rushing. And listen, that's going to be hard to do against the number one rushing defense, but he had 354 against Eastern Illinois in the quarterfinals. I know this. When you get on any graphic that mentions you and Barry Sanders in the same words, you're in good company. There was a holding penalty on the back end of the punt, so Towson backed up inside its own five. They'll give it to West. And West just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard. Second and nine. Peter Athens getting the start at quarterback for Towson. Injured his shoulder in the semifinal win against Eastern Washington. He did not play in the second half. Towson head coach Rob Ambrose told us Athens good to go. He's been practicing. He still feels some pain, but it's tolerable and he can play through it. And his play in the playoffs has been... One of the reasons the team is here today, he has taken care of the football in the pass game. Here's West, and there is a flag on the play. Prior to the snap, false start, 69 offense. After this, it's to the goal. Still second down. That's on Shane Sullivan. We talked about Peter Athens. His last four games during this playoff run, 74% completion rate, six touchdowns, and only one interception. And he was throwing some interceptions during the season. He's gotten much better with that in this playoff run. His efficiency, a big reason the Tigers are playing for a title. The old Maryland eye here on second and 12. West gets across the five-yard line, picks up four. Let's see how both teams are planning for success. That's brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, since they're somewhat mirror images of one another, they want to dominate the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. The turnover battle is going to be key. Townsend tends to put the ball on the ground when they're carrying it. Red zones, you don't settle for field goals. You need to finish with touchdowns. Towson on third downs this season, third nationally, 50%. Darius Victor into the game at running back. Athens' is pass caught by Derek Joseph. And he moves the chains for the Tigers, a gain of 11. Very well thrown. You can see Joseph just coming inside and sitting down in that window, doing a very good job of not going through that opportunity right there in the throw the clean pocket remember Anish up front this is a grizzled veteran group four seniors that have started well over 160 games in their career and now more penalty markers institution violation the offense broke the huddle with 12 five yards still first down Towson has been better at reducing the penalties in the postseason but in the regular season, they led the Colonial. They were the most penalized team point. in the Colonial. That's something you can't do if you're going to beat the two-time defending champs. Yeah, if you're going to become national champions, you have to be more buttoned up in that penalty area that we talked about. You also have to secure the football. Hand off to Victor, and he's met by a phalanx of yellow shirts. A short gain. It'll bring up second down and long. One thing to mention, Kelly, we told you on the defensive side, Towson without Jordan Love serving an NCAA suspension. On the offensive side, James Obo, the starting tight end, also suspended by the NCAA for this game. So that means Sean Mooney is getting his first start at tight end, number 87 for Towson. He does not have a reception this season. Obo was a threat in the passing game. They really don't have a threat in the passing game from the tight end position without Obo.
That's Victor lowering, lowering his shoulders, and he gets to the 20-yard line. It'll bring up third down. Terrence West still on the sideline. And this is fairly usual, a usual substitution pattern for Towns. And Darius Victor comes in, and he's the same body type. He's just three inches shorter. They're both about 220 pounds. Very physical downhill runners that have the potential to bounce it for a big play as well. Connor Frazier, who's also the backup quarterback and doubles as a wide receiver, checks into the game as a wideout. Five wide look for the Tigers. Athens throws for Joseph, incomplete fourth down. Well, Joseph was inside from that slot position, runs the corner, matched up man-to-man -man on linebacker Travis Back. Exactly what Peter Athens wanted at the quarterback position, and that ball was affected by the wind. The wind is coming out of on your screen from right to left, and the wind drove that football into the ground. Jake Ryder on to punt it away. This is an area where North Dakota State has an advantage, a decisive one in this game, special teams. You saw Ben LeCompte able to flip the field after the Bison went three and out. Jake Ryder now on to punt it away for the Tigers. He just gets it off. Ryan Smith from his own 36. And Smith taken down at the 45-yard line. So good starting field position for the Bison on their second drive. A 44-yard punt, a 10-yard return. The NCAA FCS Championship Game is presented by Northwestern Mutual, proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA, and in part by Audi, Truth in Engineering. You're watching the NCAA FCS Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. ESPN celebrating 25 years of covering the FCS Championship. North Dakota State, the number one seed against the seventh seed, the Towson Tigers. The Tigers this postseason have beaten the two seed and the three seed. This is the first time North Dakota State is facing a seeded team this postseason. And you look down on the field already with 8.23 to go in the first quarter. This field is getting torn up. And really it seems to be the middle of the field and these teams aren't spread teams that are going to throw it all over the place, but they do like to take the running game downhill and then bounce it to the outside. I think that's going to be difficult. The footing where you have to plant your foot and try to get laterally to get more yards. I, I think that's where it's going to come into play. I mean, look at that turf is just being torn up. You can see right there it's very soft, kind of a sandy base. Not very good footing at all. For two teams, as you mentioned, that like to run the ball, all of a sudden the field has become a variable. John Crockett in the game at running back, coming off a career high 195 yards rushing and the semifinal win against New Hampshire. Here is Crockett up the gut, breaks free. John Crockett finally tripped up as he gets inside the 25 yard line. Down to the 21, a gain of 33. Well, this is the downside of pressing the line of scrimmage. Look at the green grass right there because they want to get extra defenders in the box. If you don't make the play at the line of scrimmage, there isn't the safety there to make a tackle. You want to crowd the box and get extra hats in there, but you better make sure you make the tackle in those first couple of yards or it's going to give up a big one. Touchdown saving tackle by Julian Killy Kelly Lee. Smith flashes in motion. Three-step drop. Jensen finds Ryan Smith in the flat. And Smith stood up along that far sideline. He's going to be just shy of a first down. It's a gain of nine. And Anish, that's what you're going to see out of North Dakota State. It's a power run game. They establish that. And then it's this really methodical play action passing game out of that is somewhat of a maintenance type of a pass game but also they'll play action and try to get vertical on you as well you can see right here the pro style using a fullback and growthman right there growthman the all-american fullback paving the way and that's crockett 
Who takes it to the 11-yard line? It's a gain of seven. First and goal now for the Bison. Watch the fullback is going to lead. We, we've lost track of what a fullback is for, but typically when a fullback is in the game, the running game is going wherever number 40 goes in this case. Very good use of the fullback on that play. Two tight ends and a fullback on first and goal. Crockett tries the middle, spins off a couple of defenders, and then turned back by John Desir after a gain of two. The running game is very much like, a, like the pass game. It takes kind of a feeling out process. Those offensive linemen need to sort the look out up front, and typically the second drive, those big guys start to make adjustments. They take better angles, and we can see it on this drive. North Dakota State finding a lot more running room in their run game. The Bison spread it out here on second and goal. Watch for the quarterback draw. Jensen can run. And Jensen will run. He just gets back to the line of scrimmage, but there is a flag. Yeah, the face mask is flag is going to come in late, and I think Delaire, that defensive end, with his left hand, grabbed the face mask. But you called it exactly right. Empty. Gonna run. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 56 in defense. Penalties half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. He carries an automatic first down. You know, Anish, empty deep in the red zone means quarterback draw. And it was actually Farmer that time. I said it was Delaire, but Farmer, the defensive tackle, just reaches up with that big left mitt and gets the face mask of the quarterback. So the Bison have a first and goal inside the three. Jumbo set. Here's Crockett, up the middle, pushes his way into the end zone, and the Bison strike first. This is all about mass right here. We'll see if Crockett gets in. I don't know how we're going to be able to see anything on any video replay in that mass of humanity, but two fullbacks, two tight ends, and it's just a matter of getting more poundage at the point of attack than the defense has the ability to get there. It's a touchdown. Previous play is under further review. Again, you need indisputable video evidence to overturn a call. If the play stands, it would be John Crockett's 11th rushing touchdown of the season. And where's the ball when he goes down? The knee is down there. And is that indisputable? Can you tell if the ball was over the goal, uh, the plane of the goal line? The other thing you have to factor in is that camera looks like it's right on the goal line. But we can't really see anything. That other angle wasn't exactly on the goal line. And... That's right. The standard is the indisputable video evidence, and I'm not so sure we saw anything that's going to overturn it. Typically, we'll hear it's going to let the play stand as called because they don't have vi video evidence one direction or the other. If you watch the Orange Bowl game last night, play down near the goal line, and the official up in the booth essentially said it's got to pop out at you. It's yeah. got to jump out at you to overturn the call. Running on the field stands. There's a touchdown. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. I heard that as well in the game last night. And it has to jump out at you. If there isn't anything that really catches my attention, typically the play's just going to stand as call. So it's a touchdown for Crockett and the two-time defending champs with a 6-0 lead. Point after by Adam Keller is good. Five plays, 54 yards in two minutes and 49 seconds, punctuated by the Crockett TD. The North Dakota State Bison win their second FCS championship.
And they do it in fine fashion, 39 to 13, and let the party begin. A John Crockett touchdown has given North Dakota State a 7 0 okay. lead on Towson here at Toyota Stadium, the home of FC Dallas of Major League Soccer. Frisco, Texas, a site of the FCS championship game, as the Bison fans know it. Fargo South. They traveled en masse to this game. There's Brian Dowling from inside his own 10 for Towson. And Dowling gets across the 20 yard line to about the 23. Rogers Redding is the national coordinator of football officials. He's with us in the booth today. Rogers, that last touchdown, it went to further review. The play on the field stood. What did you make of it? Well, that's right. I mean, on a close play like that, where you want to take a make, take a look to make sure that he scored, but in fact, uh, you can see on the replay here, there's a mass of bodies in there. You really can't tell where the ball is. That's why the default position is that the field call on the field is right. And and it's one of those things. If you don't know, then you know. In other words, if you don't know that it's not good or it is good, then you got to let the call on the field stand. So that was the right call. Peter Athens to throw on first down. The ball is deflected and knocked incomplete. Cole Jurek got his hands on it. Second down and 10. Cole Jurek at 6'5", 250 pounds, is one of the defensive ends. Has a really nice pass rush, and he's kind of the anchor out there, captain of the football team. Opposite him is the explosive dynamic pass rusher in Kyle Emanuel. Very good bookends for this North Dakota State defense. A great matchup in the trenches. An experienced O-line against an experienced and seasoned D-line. Terrence West gets the call. And that is Vintage West. He'll take the first hit and get yards after contact. Yeah, he runs as well as any running back in a long while behind his pads. Go ahead and take a look. The point of attack, as long as you allow that guy to get downhill in a hurry, you can see the movement one way. He presses the line of scrimmage and tucks in behind his his double team with the center and the guard, or the guard and the tackle, and then he gets north and south. Very efficient runner. Three tight end look, and one of the tight ends is defensive tackle John Desir. West, it appears, is going to be marked just shy of the first down marker, and that's going to bring up fourth and short. This is going to be a really interesting early decision for head coach Ambrose right there. I mean, you have really the prototypical way to pick up a short yardage situation, the best running back probably in the country at doing just that. But remember who North Dakota State is defensively. They simply don't give up much anywhere. The Bison trumpet, the number one rushing defense in the nation. And Towson is short, so it'll bring up fourth down. And right now the offense is still on the field. This is a Tiger team that's gone for it 32 times on fourth down and converted 72% of those fourth down chances. Athens will try to sneak it. And he gets the push from that seasoned O-line we talked about for the first down. And that's the other thing about this run game. We can talk a lot about Terrence West, and he deserves every word of it, but a veteran offensive line four seniors and a freshman and they the continuity up front on the offensive line is is king up there second to probably only the quarterback position and they're as seasoned as you can get up front left tackle eric pike is an all-american the center and the right tackle both all conference selections maryland eye on first and ten And Terrence West gobbled up after a short game. Second down. West, in the quarterfinal game against Eastern Illinois, ran for 354 yards and five touchdowns. The 354 yards, an FCS playoff record. We watched that game. Crazy. And called it in Charleston, Illinois, about as great a performance as you'll see from a running back. And conditions that day far from ideal. Yeah, he was the four-wheel drive, right? And that's exactly what that they was needed. in the snow. That was an impressive outing to watch. Play action. Athens out of the backfield. He's got his fullback, Emmanuel Holder, across the 45. And a first down for Holder 
who had a touchdown catch in the win against Eastern Washington. And now a penalty marker. We saw that play action passing game out of Towson as they've gotten that running play game more established. Down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 48 on the offense. The penalty is 15 yards from the succeeding spot. It results in a first and 10. That was Drayon Johnson and another fullback in there. Remember with James Oboe out of the game, suspended for this outing, they're using their fullbacks as tight ends as well. Right in front of the official. And another penalty. Prior to snap, false start. 57 offense, five yards, still first down. And Anish, Towson is not a team that can get behind schedule. They have to stay on schedule in order to get the most out of that run game. Six penalties already for the Tigers. And while this is technically a neutral site game, Not you look so around, much. it's mostly North Dakota State fans. But this Towson team, Road Warriors, 9 0 on the road this season, 12 straight road wins overall. Athens will try to run for it across the 30, using the stiff arm, and then finally thrown out of bounds after a gain of four. Remember, Athens suffered a shoulder injury, sprained the AC joint in his right shoulder in the semifinal win against Eastern Washington. Nathan is very good in the pocket, but look at that footing. When he bounces and tries to plant his right foot and get outside, it was tenuous at best. He got the most out of that, but that's where you see it. Between the hashes, this field is absolutely getting torn off. Between that... Excuse me, I'll show it next time, but between here and here, the footing is not very good. Athens throws, caught by Dowling, who's coming off a solid game in the semifinal, 88 yards receiving against Eastern Washington. Let's go down to Kara. Guys, I talked to Nick Schaefer, the vice president of field operations here at Toyota Stadium. They laid some sod in mid-November in preparation for the game, but at the end of November, the area had an ice storm. As a result, the roots really couldn't take hold for the grass. You'll see the major issues are coming primarily between the hashes, but they have a dedicated divot crew that runs out at the break to try to make it a little bit more smooth, but it's tough out here right now for this field. On third down, there's Dowling. He's got a first down. Slips a tackle. Brian Dowling across the 30 and finally driven out of bounds. And now a flag at the end of the play. Could be a late hit. Well, as Towson is driving the football, North Dakota State wants to try to create a negative play, and so they actually brought the corner off of that side, and Peter Athens reads it extremely well and gets the ball out quickly. Was out of bounds. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 69 defense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. The corner comes off the slot, and Peter Athens gets the ball out, and everybody thought that he was out of bounds, and... Dowling continues up the field. That's very tough for a defender to lay up on that. You don't know whether he was called out of bounds or not. You don't hear the whistles down on the field. Peter Athens split wide. Connor Frazier into the game at quarterback. Frazier running left side and tripped up as he gets across the 10. It was Frazier who scored the game-winning touchdown against Eastern Washington with 17 seconds to go and played the entire second half at quarterback when Athens got hurt. Let's take a look at that throw to Dowling a little bit earlier. You're going to get a corner blitz right there, and this defender is late getting over to help. A very good job of recognizing it by the quarterback, throwing it accurately, and giving Brian Dowling room to get up the field. Very good recognition by Towson on that play.
Frazier with the toss. That's West. And he's inside the five-yard line, a gain of five. This is Terrence West territory. 40 rushing touchdowns, 41 total touchdowns. He scored a touchdown in every game this season. And actually, there's only one game where he's had only one touchdown. He's had at least two in the rest. Yeah, they really have the ultimate dry finisher. It's the opposite of what spread teams face down here when the field is condensed. Sometimes, sometimes those spread teams have a hard time finishing. This team usually finishes really well. Third and two. Final ticks of the first quarter. Holder in motion. Here's West into the end zone. And Towson a point after from pulling even. Well, this is all about power football. Lead with the big offensive lineman, Anthony Davis, the fullback, and then number 28 runs behind his pads. Carlton Littlejohn came up and put the wood to him, but you better wrap up, and you also better be committed when you try to tackle number 28 right there. West has that uncanny ability of being his own blocker quite yeah, often. no doubt. The point after is good. We've played a quarter here in Frisco in the FCS Championship. Towson and North Dakota State even at seven. North Dakota State's road to Frisco has been an easy one in large part. In their three playoff games, the Bison have outscored all their opponents by at least 31 points. For Towson, different story. In the quarterfinals in the snow in Charleston, Illinois, they rallied from 14-0 down behind Terrence West, who set an FCS record with 354 rushing yards. And then in the semis, the Inferno in Cheney, Washington against Eastern Washington, the Tigers trailed by 10 with less than six minutes to play and it was backup quarterback connor frazier who played the entire second half rallying towson for an improbable win and here are the tigers battle tested resilient and they're here in large part because of number 28 terrence west yeah and the head coach ambrose talked to us about that the word for his team is belief and i think they hoped early in the playoffs that they could get somewhere, but now they believe they deserve to be here and they believe they can win this game. That was an important first quarter. They're typically slow starting in the first quarter. Second quarter, they outscore their opponents three to one. Very important start for them. John Crockett is gonna run this one out. He's got a rushing touchdown already and he takes it to about the 23 yard line. Monday, it is the BCS championship game. Number one in undefeated Florida State against Auburn. The Tigers kick six win against Alabama. The win against Missouri in the SEC championship game. Knocking off Georgia on a Hail Mary. And you know, you look at total QBR since about week eight, Nick Marshall actually Lights. number one in the country Lights in terms out. of total QBR. Yeah, no doubt about that. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Sam O'Jury gets the call on first down. And he picks up a couple to the 25-yard line. It'll bring up second down and eight. You know, Anish, the second quarter typically is the quarter of adjustments. And we saw the offenses look much better on their second drives as opposed to their first drives. The offensive run game is very much like the passing game. The more a quarterback and receiver see coverage, the better they adapt to it. Same thing on the offensive line of scrimmage. The more they see the front seven, those guys get lathered up up front. You get more out of your run game. Flea flicker. Jensen downfield. Incomplete intended for Zach Fraw. That was one of those get you plays, and they didn't get anyone. Watch one, two, 
three guys very disciplined on the back end. You see the flea flicker. It's a one man route, maximum protection. And in the end, that one man is triple cover. Very good discipline on the back end. Jensen did throw an interception early in the game against New Hampshire. That was returned by a touchdown. Bison trailed briefly in that game before rattling off 52 unanswered. Jensen dumps it down low to Ojuri, who makes the catch inside the 30-yard line. Well short of the first down. So fourth down coming up and a good hold by this Towson defense. And Towson is doing a very good job of really just covering on the back end like they want to cover. Rob Ambrose right there is very excited about the way his defense just performed. They're kind of a keep it in front of you type of defense worked well on that drive for them. North Dakota State has allowed opponents to return just seven punts all season. The longest being five yards. This one bounces and then falls dead at about the 32 yard line. A 40 yard punt. No return. Towson with the ball. 13 20 to go in the half. You're watching the NCAA FCS Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. ESPN celebrating 25 years of covering the FCS Championship. Towson and North Dakota State tied at seven. Towson head coach Rob Ambrose had a great quote earlier during the week. He referred to North Dakota State as the Ivan Drago of FCS football. He said they're perfect. He said their program is perfect. You can't find any holes. And I think the subliminal message there is that his Towson team is Rocky because Rocky took down Drago. He better hope Towson is not Apollo Creed. It didn't end so well for Apollo in Rocky IV. Here's Terrence West. And West stopped back at the line of scrimmage. Good job by that North Dakota State defensive line. Tigers 13 and 2 this season. The 13 wins are a school record. Opened the year with an impressive win against an FBS school in Yukon. And the championship game for the first time. And Terrence West has been outstanding. West nearly fumbled, still able to recover and then gain about another two, three yards after that. It'll bring up third down. The other impressive thing about Towson is they, this is their 10th road game. They've won their Technically a neutral side yeah. game, but for all intents yeah, and look purposes, around you and see a the road green game. And yellow, but they've won nine times on the road already because less distractions. Rob Ambrose talked about that, but a Massive physical run game travels really well. Tigers three of five on third down. Movement up front on that left side of the line. Ball start. 71 offense. Five yards. Still third down. A rare mistake by the All-American left tackle, Eric Pike. And we were in the Fargo Dome two weeks ago for the semifinal game, and this crowd looks like we're in the Fargo Dome and they are very loud when the opposition has the football they sit on their hands when their offense is on the field but it was loud on that snap <laughs> Athens throws across his body Nearly picked off dangerous throw in the direction of North Dakota State's All-American cornerback Marcus Williams. Peter Athens got tagged on that play as well. You talked about it. Watch him. He gets outside the pocket, avoids a little pressure, and then right at the very end, Perry just unloads on him. And remember, he's a little dinged up. His right shoulder took a pounding a couple of weeks ago at Eastern Washington, and he got up on that play, but that was a tremendous hit. Ryan Smith, the deep man for North Dakota State. Now watch this one bounce. And it goes out of bounds. That's a 49-yard punt. Good punt by Towson. 
North Dakota State gets it back. 11.28 to go, first half. The NCAA FCS Championship Game is presented by Northwestern Mutual, proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA, and in part by Ally Bank. Your money needs an ally. That was the scene earlier during the regular season when game day visited Fargo. And what it did, it essentially made North Dakota State the face of FCS football. And it speaks to the job that Craig Bowl has done in building this program, seeing the transition from Division II to the FCS to now where they are the face of 1AA, the FCS. Yeah, they really are the gold standard at this level. There's no doubt about that. And going for their third national championship in three years, obviously, that's a sign of really, really good things. Play action on first down. Jensen completes underneath. That's John Crockett. Makes a man miss. And Crockett tackled at the 29-yard line. A uh, game of eight. It's almost 1,100 miles from Fargo, North Dakota to Frisco, Texas. What you're seeing there is the Bison Tracker. A lot of the North Dakota State fans have an app. They use it to light up their phone when it's dark before the Bison come out on the field at the Fargo Dome for home games. But there's also a GPS sync. You can check in and it lets other fans know where the Bison herd is congregated. And as you saw with that graph, they were migrating southward. Ball start, 85 offense, five yards, still second down. The red areas there are airports, so the bison tracker was tracking the movement of the herd south about 1,100 miles. Minneapolis, that's that red spot kind that's of the right of your screen, right? yeah. DFW on the bottom, yeah. that's not a hurricane. They no. finally arrived at this game. <laughs> and Mass, they've taken over Frisco. And that might be a delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yards. Still second down. Let's check in with Kara. There was an initial allotment of tickets that sold out within a half hour to this game in August, you guys. And then a lot of fans from North Dakota invested in a three-year ticket plan to lock in their opportunity to possibly watch the Bison's third straight attempt at an FCS title. August, Kelly, August. Jensen will keep it here on second down. Tripped up right at the 20-yard line. Nice tackle there by the Virginia Tech transfer, Telvin Clark, who leads this Towson defense and tackles 140-plus on the season. Yeah, Telvin Clark on one side and in the middle, Monte Gaddis as well, and they have well over 200 tackles between them, and Towson does a very good job of occupying defenders on the line of scrimmage and freeing up their linebackers to run free. You saw it on that play. Derek Lang into the game on third down and nine. Jensen with time, throws too high. Incomplete intended target Trevor Gebhardt and it's fourth down. So North Dakota State 0 for 3 now on third downs. They came in leading the country converting 56% of their third down chances. And they really got off schedule because of the two penalties. And then Towson does a very good job defensively. What they do is they kind of play a catch defense. They keep the ball in front of them, read routes and then break on the football. They are very, very efficient at playing coverage on the back end that way. Chance for Towson to get some good field position here. Dowling's going to try to return this one. Only the eighth punt returned against North Dakota State. And a solid return by Dowling who brings it near midfield. Towson has it as it, at its own 49-yard line. Sunday on ESPN, Arkansas State Ball State, the Go Daddy Bowl. It comes your way at 9 Eastern. Bowl season winding down as we get ready for Monday's game.
between Florida State and Auburn in the BCS championship game. And Arkansas State's had a pretty good track record of coaches. Gus Malzahn, Brian Harson, now the head coach at Boise State. Terrence West plows forward into Bison territory. Give him four, second and six. North Dakota State runs a 4-3 defense, and they have a nose tackle and a three technique inside at their defensive tackle positions that really have to do a good job of not only securing that first level, but when the ball bounces outside, those two guys really have to turn and chase the ball as well. Play action. Athens is Pat caught by the true freshman Andre Dessenberg. And that's good for a Towson first down. And Anish, when you run it well, you obviously can then go to play action passing. And it's not just effective down the field, but play action passing typically translates into really good pass protection as well because defenders are stepping up to run and then rallying out of there to the pass coverage. Very well protected that time. Both tailbacks into the game, West and Darius Victor, the freshman. That's West in motion. Athens off his back foot, and it goes out of bounds, so it'll be second and 10. Brian Schatz, number 61, got the late pressure on Peter Athens and actually kept Athens in the pocket. Athens is very good at diagnosing pressure and then subtly moving out of the pocket and being effective outside there. Athens off to a relatively slow start in the pass game. Five of nine for 75 yards. Remember, he's coming off that shoulder injury. I didn't see any ill effects, but that's not a very good start. Play clock winding down. There's no foul on the play. Look to me. Please reset the game clock to 744, please. 744. So a bit of a clock issue, 7.44 to go, first half. Towson driving. This Tiger team has been an underdog the last couple of weeks. Please reset the game clock to 7.44, please. And when we talked to Coach Rob Ambrose last night, they relished the role of us against the world, if you will. It has worked really well for them. You're, you're exactly right. I think this team is made up of guys that really have responded well to that scenario. On second and ten, here's West. The third guy that touched him brought him down. It's a gain of six, third down and four. North Dakota State so far has done a pretty good job on Terrence West. 11 carries, 38 yards, but West is a guy We've seen he gets stronger as the game goes on. Yeah, that offensive line just kind of leans on the defensive front over the course of time, and it's Terrence West just getting downhill. And the punishment of that, sometimes it's the third and fourth quarter where it really pays dividends. Here's West. And he picks up a first down for Towson again. That ability to take the initial hit and keep moving forward. Yeah, yards after contact is certainly one of the characteristics that separates really good to great running backs from the rest of them. And he gets behind his pads, and he's so efficient at finding the softness initially, Anish, at the point of attack. He gets the most out of pretty much every run. Look at time of possession. A lot of times, it's really not an important stat. Both these teams value it greatly. Athens flushed. 
Chased by Perry. And he throws it away, second and 10. Nice decision. They were wanting to get out to the quick passing game to the left, and North Dakota State rolled coverage to that side and pressed him at the line of scrimmage. Nothing was there. Throw the ball away. That was a very good decision by Athens. Ryan Drevlo, rather, on the quarterback hurry. It's a Towson offensive line that's one of the best in the nation. Four seniors, three all-conference linemen. On second and ten, Darius Victor slips after a gain of just three, rather a loss of three, and it's third down coming up, and that was the field coming into play there. Yeah, Victor's trying to get outside behind the center, Doug Shaw, and you can see right there, his right foot slips, his left foot gets caught in the turf, and then he goes down. And look at that. It's going from bad to worse as we speak. The crew here during the commercial break, stoppages in play, trying to patch this field up as best they can. Four-man rush. Athens on the run. And that's caught underneath by Connor Frazier. Well short of the first down marker. So fourth down coming up. Towson really does not have a reliable kicking game. Drew Evangelista and DJ Sovin handle the field goals. Evangelista just 5 of 12 on the season, but this is going to be Sovin to attempt a 41-yarder. He usually attempts the longer field goals. Kick is up and it's blocked. That's a live ball scooped up by North Dakota State. Kyle Emanuel takes it all the way down to the five yard line. I think the pressure's going to come from right there. Might be Eagle jumping through number 20 right there. A very good job of getting skinny and getting through that wall. And watch the footing. A little bit of slippage by that punt foot. I don't know that it really contributed because that penetration was quick and decisive, but that plant was not very solid. Off the top of the broadcast, Kara Capuano told us both coaches we're saying this could be a game that comes down to a couple of plays either way. And she mentioned special teams being a potential game changer. We told you early on, North Dakota State with a decisive advantage in the special teams department against Towson. And a Tiger kicking game, which has been unreliable this season. A blocked field goal. Kyle Emanuel picks it up, brings it down to the five, and then Ryan Smith runs it in. Colton Hegel gets pressure initially and then Emmanuel takes it to the house that may be the decisiveness special teams turnovers first big play goes to North Dakota State for a full recap of all fall football championships visit NCAA.com you can also get up to speed with previews and the latest news on the upcoming winter championships log on to NCAA.com and Ishraf, Kelly Stauffer, Kara Capuano. A blocked field goal leads to a short field for North Dakota State. Ryan Smith with a touchdown run. And the Bison, despite just 91 yards of total offense, their offense has been held in check. Credit Towson's defense in this game. But a special teams miscue has given North Dakota State the lead as the wind blows the ball off the tee. 
Well, Colton Eagle is right here. You're going to get blocking out that direction and blocking out this direction, and he basically just steps over and gets to the ball. Wasn't very well communicated up front. To some extent, North Dakota State was overloaded to that side. Very well designed, and they certainly finished the play well. Derek Joseph and Brian Dowling deep for Towson. This one bounces. It's picked up by Joseph. He's returned two kicks for his score this season and tackled at the 26-yard line. Let's go to the studio. We check in with Chris Cotter. Anish, coming up at the half, Trevor Maddich will join me. We'll give you a peek at the BBVA Compass Bowl currently going on right now over on ESPN, Vandy, and Houston. Also, coaching carousels, coaches on the move in both the NFL and in college football. And yet another look at the BCS Championship game coming up on Monday night. That's coming up at the half, Anish. All right, thank you, Chris. 438 left here in this first half. Towson driving last time before the block field goal turned into points for North Dakota State. Terrence West, little shake and big. West breaks the tackle, bullies his way to the 45-yard line, a gain of 19. With a power game for Towson is getting rolling. You're going to see a guard pull to the left there. The fullback leads up, 57. Charles Johnson pulls around, and 28 doesn't need a lot of room, but there you saw the nifty feet. He runs behind his pads and his physical, but he can make you miss just like that. Out of the Maryland eye. Grant Olson the stop after a gain of four by West. Olson isn't going to play much today. He's coming off a torn ACL that he actually suffered during the season. Came back for a few snaps against New Hampshire in the semifinals. He is the heart and soul no of despise and defense, the inspirational leader. And with that ACL, they hope he can just play downfield. That's Darius Victor. And Victor with a gain of five, close to a first down. Tackled again by Olsen. Victor was the freshman of the year in the Colonial. And Olsen from that middle linebacker position, defensive coordinator Chris Kleiman said that they hope they can just get some downhill snaps out of him. When you can defend the downhill power game in the tackle box, typically the ACL is not an issue. It's when you have to plant and get side to side that it comes into play. Three tight end look on third and short. Here's Victor. And I think he may have got it with the second effort. He did. First down, Towson, as we come up on three minutes to play. You have to be committed when you come up to tackle either one of these running backs. This is Darius Victor, and right there. I mean, very seldom does a guy go down. That was Travis Beck, 52, that Chris Kleiman said is probably the best tackler on that team. That was big boy football on that play. Play action. Athens to the air. Intercepted by C.J. Smith. Smith still on his feet. Sheds a tackle across midfield. And Smith finally dropped inside the 45-yard line of Towson. A 32-yard return. C.J. Smith is matched up on Dowling number 29. It's all about the release. Very good job with his hands. And then C.J. Smith finishes the play. A lot of times, if you just simply get hands on a receiver, at the very least, you impede their progress. But to finish that play, C.J. Smith turned into a receiver. That was tremendous on the other end. These two teams were playing to a stalemate up until the last few minutes. And the pendulum is swung in favor of the Bison. Ojuri across the 40-yard line to the 39, a gain of four. Now, for the first quarter and most of the second quarter, Towson was executing its game plan pretty well. Converting third downs, moving the ball, 
well, head keeping coach, North Dakota State off the field, and yeah. that's all turned in the last three, four You're minutes. You're exactly right. And head coach Rob Ambrose told us that the separation could be special teams and turnovers, and that's exactly what we've seen on the last couple of plays. Jensen's pass incomplete. You when two teams play very much like one another, a powerful run game, they covet time of possession, they play well defensively, especially on third down and in the red zone. Rob Ambrose told us, we said, well, what's the separation between these two teams? He said, you have to be good on special teams and you have to take care of the ball. Those two things fall into North Dakota State's category. The Bison have yet to convert on third down, despite being number one in the FCS in that category. They're going to get one here. That's the tight end, Kevin Vaudlin, a gain of nine, and momentarily stops the clock with 144 to go. Both teams have all three timeouts. And Towson just simply dropped coverage that particular play. Vaudlin goes out in the flat and just cues back inside, and he was completely uncovered. Ty Smith creeping toward the defensive line. Could be a corner blitz here. Watch 24. It is a corner blitz. Jensen gets rid of it. Little screen. A jury spins away. And he's inside the 20 yard line to about the 17 and a timeout by North Dakota State with 1.10 to go. A gain of 18 by Sam O'Jury. The Bison threatening late in the first Come half. Out. North Dakota State, first shot. It's been an evenly played game, or at least it was for most of the first half, but in the last few minutes, the momentum has swung. North Dakota State used a blocked field goal. That set up a touchdown run from Ryan Smith, and now the Bison driving after a C.J. Smith interception. In the red zone, first down and 10. Jensen looking for the end zone. Touchdown, North Dakota State. Zach Braun. The play action pass in the backfield invites the inside coverage up and then Vra does a very good job of be beating Ty Smith inside and getting over top of that linebacker and then the accurately thrown pass by Brock Jensen. Vra's 15th touchdown reception of the season. That's a school record. I was just about to mention we hadn't been calling Zach Vra's name, hadn't been targeted a lot. He's their top receiver. He makes his presence felt with 105 to go in the first half. So 14 unanswered by North Dakota State. The Bison with a two-score lead. Although for Towson, this is familiar territory. They've been used to coming back in these playoffs. This was all set up by C.J. Smith making a great play, not allowing Dowling to get off the line of scrimmage, but then the finish, the ball skill at the end, that was a tremendous play, and it leads to the touchdown. The play-action pass in the backfield, Draw runs a slant route inside, beats the underneath coverage, which was actually Delaire, Ryan Delaire, the rush guy for Towson, and then the over over-the-top coverage, very well designed, but you're exactly right. This game turned, really, on the couple of things that we thought may make a difference. Special teams, the blocked field goal, and then the turnovers. Towson quarterback Peter Athens had been so good protecting the ball this postseason. Hadn't thrown an interception. He had lost one fumble, but no interceptions in the postseason. After that was a bit of an issue during the regular season, and the one he throws in the title game here in the first half leads directly to a Bison score. Still 105 to go in the first half, and the Tigers have all three of their timeouts. Ryan Dowling, the UMass transfer, 
sheds a tackler. And he brings it out to about the 34-yard line, a 22-yard return. A lot of ways to watch Monday's BCS Championship game. We call it BCS Megacast. You can watch the game on ESPN Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern. ESPN2 will have BCS Title Talk. Our analysts will break down the game with celebrity guests. On ESPN News, BCS Film Room, and then ESPN Classic. You can hear the sideline sounds of the game. Athens over the middle. That's Dessenberg. And he's down at the 41-yard line, a gain of seven yards. Clock still running. Tigers have all three of their timeouts. Athens near side. That's caught by Dessenberg, short of the first down. And the Tigers don't elect to call a timeout here. Yeah, it's not a first down, and so the clock isn't going to stop. Peter Athens is talking about killing it, but it's going to be a moot point. Athens under pressure. Down he goes. Sacked by Cole Jurek, and it's fourth down. Very poor clock management. You have three timeouts left. You catch the football in bounds, and you don't get a first down. Timeout. You have to Thousand. burn a timeout then. First charge. Timeout. Timeout will be 30 seconds. See the pressure right there by Jurek. One of the only times that Peter Athens has really been under pressure very quickly, but Rob Ambrose inexplicably doesn't use the timeout to play before. On either of the previous two plays, and now a timeout on fourth and eight with 11 seconds to go. Not sure what that does, but these were the two plays that really turned this game. A blocked field goal, Kyle Emanuel picks it up, Colton Eagle blocked it. North Dakota State gets it at its own five. Ryan Smith runs it in for a score. And then C.J. Smith, his third pick of the year. That sets up a touchdown pass from Brock Jensen to Zach Braun. And in the punting game, too, against Eastern Washington, there was a shank punt. So, you know, in that last situation, I'm not sure if the smart play was maybe just letting clock run out and going into halftime. I totally agree. Well, why call timeout and punt the football? Ryan Smith will let it bounce. And that punt will take us to halftime. A 53-yard punt to close the first half. North Dakota State struck first. Towson answered with Terrence West. And then a couple of touchdowns, one off of a blocked field goal, one off of an interception. And the Bison with a 21-7 lead after 30 minutes of play. Let's go down to Kara Capuano. You told us one or two plays was going to make the difference. How do the Bison maintain the momentum they created with special teams and defense? Well, you know, a turnover has become such a big, big part of this game, and we were able to ignite on that. The game actually is much closer than what the score indicates, so we're going to need to really play well in the second half. But certainly to be up by two touchdowns, good position right now. How do you enforce that to this team being up by two touchdowns that is still closer than it seems? Well, I think a lot of it just comes with maturity, and uh, our guys understand uh, uh, that they really got to play hard for the next 30 minutes to secure a third national championship. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Anish? North Dakota State 30 minutes away from a third straight championship. Towson? Like they've done in their last two games, we'll have to come back again. Let's go to the studio for halftime and Chris Cotter. Welcome back to the NCAA FCS Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. ESPN celebrating 25 years of coverage of the FCS Championship. We're about ready for the start of the second half. North Dakota State with a 21-7 lead on Towson. The Bison seeking a three-peat, Anish Schramm alongside Kelly Stauffer for the first quarter and for most of the second quarter, an evenly played game. I'd even say slight advantage to Towson. And then with about five minutes to go in that second quarter, a couple of game-changing plays, one on special teams and then a turnover by the Tigers. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think that's fair. I think when we're looking at this before the game is trying to create a little separation, special teams and taking care of the football. Guess what showed up in the second quarter? special teams and taking care of the football. They go to that second quarter. This was sort of the turning point. Colton Heagle blocks a field goal. 
Kyle Emanuel picks it up, brings it back to the Towson five yard line. Instead of 10 7 Towson, if the field goal is good, 14 7 North Dakota State after Ryan Smith punches it in. And then Peter Athens intercepted by C.J. Smith. That would lead to another Bison score. Yeah, and I don't actually put that on Peter Athens. You can see the touchdown there by Bravin. His receiver didn't get off the line of scrimmage, and it was a very good play by Smith on that interception. Let's go down to the field in Kara Capuano. Towson head coach Rob Ambrose gave the Tigers players a choice at halftime. They can go out and start the buses, or they can do what they always do and come back and win this football game. He pointed out they're only down two scores. That's a deficit they have overcome in this postseason. If two plays went the way of Towson, they could be up on a team that hasn't lost in a very long time, guys. You look at what Towson has done in this postseason in the quarterfinals against Eastern Illinois. The Tigers trailed 14 to nothing, and Eastern Illinois had Jimmy Garoppolo, the Peyton Award winner. That's the Heisman of the FCS. Towson came back to win that game. And you want to point to something. Defensively, Towson has done a pretty good job against North Dakota State. All the buys and scores have come with a short field. Towson to receive to start the second half. And Bison kicking with the win. So North Dakota State will start from its, uh, rather, Towson will start from its own 25 yard line. And Towson's defense has actually played pretty well. North Dakota State hasn't had the football very long because they didn't need to have it. They've had really good field position when they scored the football. The three times they did not score the football, they actually had more yards to cover. And, it's the game that we really expected. The defenses right now have actually played pretty well. Peter Athens, 8 of 14, 90 yards, and an interception in the first half for Towson. Athens hands it off to Terrence West. He's got a hole, and West takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 18, and West up to 84 yards rushing in this contest. And Sam Evans, the freshman up front with those Wiley veterans, pulls and gets out front. And then 28 West just gets downhill. And that's the power running game, or sometimes they call it a G game, where it's just the guard pulling as opposed to two pullers like it was on that block. Right back to West. And he's to the 45, a gain of two. West. 14 yards from 100. North Dakota State has only given up three 100-yard games this season to opposing rushers. And in fact, the Bison have faced the number two and number three rushers in the FCS. They shut down Zach Zinner of South Dakota State, and they shut down Tall Fellow from Coastal Carolina. No game for West. It'll bring up third down. And North Dakota State defensively does what they call keeping the cup. And what that means defensively up front is you want to anchor at the defensive pack, tackle positions and set the edges with your defensive ends. And you have to do that against this prolific power run game for Towson. Darius Victor in on third down. Victor in there to block. Athens throws good coverage that time. That was C.J. Smith blanketing the freshman Andre Dessenberg. C.J. Smith had the big interception in the first half and very good coverage on that particular play. And C.J. Smith has really had to grow up this year. Marcus Williams is a tremendous corner on the opposite side. Teams tend to go away from him. C.J. Smith has had to grow up in a hurry. Jake Ryder on to punt. Ryan Smith waits at his own 19. Smith lets it bounce. Rolls inside the 15. And Towson will down it after a 43-yard punt. Well, North Dakota State, when it's had to go the length of the field, hasn't been able to do much. There are three non-scoring drives. The Bison have started at their own 24-yard line on average. The three scoring drives, the average start has been the Towson 34-yard line. 
This Towson defense has more than held its own against the North Dakota State offense that had put up at least 500 yards of total offense in every postseason game this year. And movement up front as flags fly. 46 offense, five yards, still first down. Second false start penalty on Andrew Bonnet, who serves as the backup fullback and sometimes the second tight end. And that field position graphic is certainly insightful. And remember the field position for this Bison D or offense was established by the blocked field goal and the interception. Yep. So that made the, the going pretty easy. But you're right. Towson has played really well on the defensive side for the most part. Pistol look here for the Bison. Low snap. There's Crockett. Met right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard. Second down. Arnold Fault Farmer, the defensive tackle inside, is a massive man at 6'1", 325 pounds. He anchors a run inside. And then Ryan Dallaire, the defensive end, is, is really kind of the hybrid linebacker defensive end type guy. He was in on that play as well. They morph between kind of a three-man defensive line and a four-man defensive line. And the pivot guy is number 56, Ryan Dallaire. Dallaire, 11 and a half sacks, tied for third in the nation. He's lined up on the far side of the D-line. Jensen's got an open receiver, and that's caught by Vraw. A 19-yard pickup and a Bison first down. Bra was matched up on Kelly Kelly Lee on that particular play. Very good catch at the end. And that's what Bra does. Runs great routes, and he finishes with impeccable ball skills. Bra, a 1,000-yard receiver. He's got a touchdown catch in this game. Bonnet in motion. Again, is to Crockett, dragging tacklers across midfield, and finally brought down into Towson territory. A 28-yard pickup for John Crockett, who's picking up right where he left off in the semifinal. And Telvin Clark, number 13, watch him jump outside right there. He jumps outside and takes on the fullback Grothman on the outside shoulder, and he gives up his gap. You can see right there, he should have taken the inside shoulder of that fullback and forced the running back Crockett outside. Crockett had 195 yards in the semifinal win against New Hampshire. That was a career high. Three-step drop, Jensen to the air. Great throw, great catch by Vroff. Julian Kelly Kelly Lee on the coverage, and that was just a tremendous throw of the receiver and quarterback in sync. They've thrown a lot together, have Jensen and Bra on the back shoulder throw on Kelly Kelly Lee. Remember, Kelly Kelly Lee is getting his first start because Jordan Love was suspended for this game. The Love is a Georgia transfer, a ton of speed. That's a tough assignment for Kelly Kelly Lee. Bra and Avis School's all-time single season leader in receiving yards after that last catch. On the ground here on first down. And a short gain for Crockett, tackled by Monte Gaddis, the Maryland transfer. And Braun, this game, three catches, 51 yards. Single season record holder for touchdown catches and receiving yards. Had a TD grab in that first half. And a very good all around receiver, and certainly the go to guy for Brock Jensen. 4-5 speed. He doesn't look like he runs fast. He's kind of spindly, but he gets downfield in a hurry. Play action. Jensen finds Ryan Smith. Escapes one defender. Smith gets inside the 10-yard line. Finally tackled by Gaddis. A 16-yard pickup. It's going to be first and goal. The head coach for Towson, Rob Andrew. Ambrose said we have to tackle well. You can see right there. He should be tackled for 
essentially no gain. The missed tackle turns into a lot of yards after the catch. Alexander DeSanzo, the sixth year senior, whiffed on the initial pursuit. Crockett now gives it up to Vraw. On the reverse, Vraw gets right back to the line of scrimmage, second down and goal. The fullback, Andrew Grothman, was outside, and he had to maintain a block out on the edge for a long time. If he just seals his guy outside, running back just walks into the end zone that particular play. It was actually Vraw on the, on the reverse. Very well blocked, except for Grothman out on the edge. Vraw on the sidelines here on second and goal. Smith lined up in the slot. Jensen's going to keep this. And Brock Jensen into the touchdown. And the Bison with a 27-7 lead. Brock Jensen doesn't run with it much, but when he does, he's quite sneaky. Delaire actually has the quarterback on that quarterback zone read, and Delaire just falls asleep. He works upfield, forgets about 16. Brock Jensen stepping up inside. Kind of a sneaky runner, and it's timely. They don't run him much, but when they do, it's usually very effective. Jensen ran for three rushing touchdowns in the title game last year. That was his 10th rushing touchdown of the season this year. Point after is good, and North Dakota State with a three-score lead, 9.09 to go here in the third. When we come back, we'll hear from a Heisman Trophy winner who's with Kara Capuano. 21 unanswered points by the Bison of North Dakota State, and they've got a three-touchdown lead. We go down to the field in Cara Capuano. I'm with Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown, the FCS ambassador for the championship game this year. What have you seen so far? It started closely contested, but the Bison have kind of run away a bit. Yeah, you know, this Bison team is unbelievable. You know, it's a close game for about a quarter and a half, and all of a sudden, a couple turnovers, and now we have, uh, unfortunately, a blowout. But... Uh, great football was played early in the game, no doubt about it. What have your roles this week included, Tim? You know, I had a chance to speak to both teams yesterday uh, at the luncheon, and uh, today I've been out hanging out with the fans and just doing a lot of fun stuff, but it's been a great experience for me. Been a Dallas boy, been, you know, a local kid. It's been great. I've got one more question for you, but let's throw it back up to Anish for the kickoff here. All right, thanks, Carol. We'll get you back down there. Kelly Stoff, right now, Tim Brown, a contemporary of yours. When you played for the Seahawks, the Raiders, Back then, Seahawks yeah. and Raiders, that was the same division, the AFC we West. We don't really need to mention any of that stuff. <laughs> he tore us off. <laughs> Kelly says Tim tore up his Seahawks. Kara? Kelly Stoffer, our analyst, said that you tore up the Seahawks back when you guys were division rivals. But really quickly, Tim, put into perspective, if the Bison hang on and win a third straight national championship, how does that rate compared to other achievements? Well, you know, you have to rank it right up there. I mean, it's very difficult to do. You get new kids in every year. And uh, for them to come back in three years in a row and win a championship, it's unbelievable, really. Thanks for the time, Thank Tim. You. Appreciate you, Carl. Anish? Thank you, Kara. Tim Brown winning the Heisman at Notre Dame. Went on to a great pro career as well. 28 to 7. Towson, they've been down this postseason before. Do they have another comeback in them? Athens off play action. Open receiver Joseph along the near sideline, and he's out of bounds with a 45, a gain of 20. And here's the question now, Kelly. The running game has been so good for Towson, even when they've been down. They've stayed with it. How much longer can you stay with it with, you know, time ticking? There's a sense of urgency being down three scores. Yeah, and it's not only the clock running, as you talked about, Anish, but it's the North Dakota State Bison defense, the number one defense in all the land, and they're very tough to get anything against. You probably have to start putting it there more often than not now. They'll try Terrence West. Takes a couple always to get him down. One guy's got to hit him to slow him. 
And then it was Carlton Littlejohn who makes the tackle after a gain of four. Comebacks have been nothing new for Towson at Stony Brook, New Hampshire, Albany, William and Mary, James Madison, Eastern Illinois. In the semifinals against Eastern Washington, Towson trailed by 10 with less than six minutes to play. And down to their backup quarterback, the Tigers were able to rally for a win and get to Frisco in the championship. West stopped at the 50 flag on the play. This might be Charles Johnson, number 57, was the polling guard, and I think he got his hands on the defender's face mask. Personal foul, face mask, offense, right tackle, 15 yards from the previous spot, and still second down. And penalties have been a killer for Towson today. That is the eighth penalty against the Tigers. And that's the thing with the run game, Anish, is not only getting behind in the game, but getting behind schedule on a drive. That hurt them in the first half, and they have to stay ahead of schedule or on schedule offensively. Remember, their pass game is primarily a play-action pass game off of that established physical run game. Can't fool anybody with play action on second and 21. West out of the backfield. West dragging a couple of tacklers across the 40 to the 42 yard line. Give him nine. So third down and about 12 to go for the Tigers. And not a bad maintenance play by Peter Athens. Soft coverage by the Bison on the back end and dumped it off to the guy that you want to touch the ball anyway. 28 Terrence at West. West finished third in the voting for the Peyton Award. That goes to the best offensive player in the FCS. Peter Athens is down here now in the slaughter. Actually, that's Connor Frazier. Athens in trouble. Down he goes. Ryan Drevlo gets credit for the sack. The field may have had something to do with it. Drevlo coming from that nose tackle position, getting the pressure up inside. You can see him coming right off the center. Doug Shaw beats him outside and gets to the quarterback. So Towson forced to punt fourth and 23. Fair catch call by Smith. And he makes it at the 36-yard line. A 33-yard punt, no return. North Dakota State rolling. Little throwback. Here's McNorton. He's got a ton of room to the 20, then to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, North Dakota State wins the Division I football championship. Jensen has it to the 10. He cuts it back. He will take it in. The North Dakota State Bison win their second FCS championship. Three straight trips to the championship game. North Dakota State on this list. Appalachian State, the only FCS school to win three consecutive titles. And Jerry Moore, the head coach for Appalachian State, actually spoke to this North Dakota State before the season. And the Bison went outlining their team goals. They had three of them. Win the conference. They won the Missouri Valley. Win a championship and go perfect. Two and three. Pretty close to being knocked off if North Dakota State can finish it. Sam O'Jury. First team all conference running back using the stiff arm. He gets free. And O'Jury into Towson territory. It's a gain of 17 yards. For North Dakota State head coach Craig Ball. He is coaching his final game with the Bison. He accepted the head coaching job at Wyoming. A lot of this staff will make the trip to Laramie. Defensive coordinator Chris Kleiman will be the next head coach at North Dakota State.
Back to Ojuri, breaks free, still on his feet. Sam Ojuri brought down at the 10-yard line. Christian Carpenter with a touchdown saving tackle, but it's a 37-yard pickup. North Dakota State's power run game is just getting downhill. You can see that offensive line just simply getting a hat on a hat, getting great fits up front, and this is kind of the vice that North Dakota State puts you in. They get up and then they just grind it on you and you're seeing it right now. Ojiri is that guy that's a little more explosive at the running back position. We saw that on the last two carries. Both buys and running backs, Ojiri and Crockett, north of 1,000 yards on the season. Back to Ojiri. And that time he's tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Telvin Clark, first team all-conference linebacker, makes the stop. And Gimmestead, Tyler Gimmestead, the right guard, hold on that last play in what we call a G-series. You have a fullback, and then you have a guard, which stands for the G, getting up in that point of attack as well. And then you have the power game, where you actually pull two offensive linemen and relocate to the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And that's what North Dakota State is doing currently. Play action on second down underneath. That's Bonnet, and he's met immediately by Ty Smith. So third and goal coming up. No gain on the play. Ryan Delaire from his defensive end position on that boot where Brock Jensen was trying to get outside, and Delaire just laid the wood to him. Down here, you got to be wary of the tight end. 85, Kevin Vaudlin. It's a lot of his touchdowns. In the 10 yard range. Jensen throws over the middle. That's caught by Smith. Smith stood up shy of the goal line. Fourth down coming up for the Bison. North Dakota State's offensive line is already begging to stay on the field, and that's exactly what Craig Bull is going to allow them to do. I think this is the opportunity Craig Bull sees to somewhat put this game away or certainly make it much more difficult for Towson to come back in this game today. On fourth down this season, North Dakota State, 12 of 17. Ojuri the deep back. Let's see if they try that right side with big Billy Turner anchoring the line. Ojuri's going to try to run behind Turner, and he's been stopped. That's a big hold by this Towson defense. The Tigers come up with a fourth down stop, and Towson still has a pulse with 2.57 to go in the third. The NCAA FCS Championship game is brought to you by the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase and the all-new Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. Towson pinned at its own one-yard line. 99 to go, down three scores, late third quarter, FCS Championship game. Terrence West stopped right at the line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Let's take a look at that last stop. This is actually a guard right here that's at fullback, Tyler Gimmestead. He's going to get up inside, and angles and inches make a big difference. The running back actually just needs to stay a little bit more outside. That's where that big guard become fullback, got a little bit more push, and O'Jerry just bleeds inside a little bit and just doesn't finish it off. Angles and inches in tight spaces on the goal line are the key. Right now there's an injured North Dakota State player being attended to. That's 93, Cole Jurek. He's had issues with his shoulder the last couple of seasons. In fact, got a couple of braces to keep those shoulders together. A three-year starter part of an experienced defensive line. Both DNs are three-year starters. And the two D tackles, Levon Perry and Ryan Drevlo, 
for your starters. Yeah, experience on the line of scrimmage offensively, or in this case, defensively, makes a huge difference. West spins away from trouble, and he lost a yard, so third down coming up. Terrence West barely got out of the end zone, and North Dakota State's defense obviously knows that they want to run the football down here. You can see Anthony Davis, the guard, is pulling and trying to create some room, but West was fortunate to get out of the end zone right there. One thing you got to be wary of, if they don't get a first down here and you have to punt, down three scores, the way North Dakota State can chew up clock, Towson might not get that, it back three more times. That is a great point. I totally agree with you. Here's West. He'll try the outside. Hurdles over Hegel. And West at least gives the punter a little bit of breathing room as he picks up six. And with that run, Terrence West has crossed the 2,500-yard mark for the season. And that was all about West right there. I mean, there wasn't anything to get. And good running backs create their own yards and number 28 did it on that play. Well, they've got Connor Frazier back deep. He's the quarterback, the backup quarterback and also wide receiver. So Towson might be up to something here. Frazier will kick it and that goes out of bounds inside the Towson 35 marked out at the 31. Kelly, if you're going to punt it, why not use the punter? You know, that was one of those things I think they trust Cr Frazier back there with the football maybe they, more than they do their punter. That was really interesting. For a full recap of all fall football championships, visit NCAA.com. You can also get up to speed with previews and the latest news on the upcoming winter championships. Log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Play action. Jensen for Vra. And it's too far, incomplete. Second down and 10. You get the sense. North Dakota State looking for that final haymaker to end this. Yeah, in the short field, they certainly were wanting to hit a big play right there. And when North Dakota State has possessed the football for a little longer in this second half, their run game has really got on track. 18 carries, 164 yards over nine yards a carry. So in the first half, it didn't really look that good. They just simply didn't have enough plays to get it going. Here's Crockett, who's been averaging better than 10 yards a carry. And Crockett picks up just about 10. We'll bring up uh, first down got just enough for the first down. So Crockett moves the chains for North Dakota State and limps off gingerly after the run. And the guard, Zach Johnson, number 66, was pulling out in front of that play. And it's one thing to try to relocate offensive linemen. It's a far another matter for those offensive linemen to sort things out on the edge and square up. And this North Dakota State team is really, really efficient at doing just that. Play action. Here's Bonnet. Over one defender, and Bonnet is going to be marked a yard shy of the first down. A gain of nine yards on the play. Second and one, and that should be the final play of this third quarter. North Dakota State and Towson. At one point, this was a 7-7 game. 21 unanswered for the Bison. North Dakota State, 15 minutes away from a third straight title. Anish Shroff, Kelly Stauffer, Kara Capuano. The game turned here. Second quarter, Towson's field goal block. Kyle Emanuel picks it up, takes it down to the Tiger five-yard line. That led to a North Dakota State touchdown. Then a C.J. Smith interception late in the first half. 
led to another North Dakota State touchdown. Brock Jensen running it in, 21 unanswered points. And the Bison looking for more in the red zone as we start the fourth quarter. Here's John Crockett. And Crockett dives to the 14, or rather the nine yard line. It's a gain of three. A first down for the Bison, first and goal. First quarter, North Dakota State 69 yards, 65 in the second, and then the offense came to life in the third. Yeah, and they possessed the ball more in this second half, so that mm -hmm. third quarter has taken off when that Bison run game started going downhill with more looks up front by that offensive line. Here's Sam Ojuri. Ran into his fullback, Grothman, got spun around. And he takes it to the six yard line. Second goal. And the nature of what North Dakota State does, defensively as well, but certainly offensively, is they just wear on you. Towson really hasn't had the opportunity to do that much in the second half because North Dakota State has possessed it through their run game. North Dakota State averaging almost eight yards per play. Now the Bison leading the play clock a little bit. Ojuri up the gut. Falls backward to the one yard line. Third and goal coming up. And Anish, you talked about bleeding the play clock and that's one of the things I noticed about Brock Jensen, even in the first half is he gets that play clock a lot of times under five seconds. I mean, you talk about managing a game, which every quarterback needs to manage situational points and times in the game. Right now, the clock is your friend. You want to bleed it if you're North Dakota State as much as you can. Oh, jury the deep back, third and goal from the one. And again, that play clock under 10 seconds. Jensen gives to Ojuri, and he's into the end zone. Tenth rushing touchdown of the season for the senior Sam Ojuri, and that is now 27 unanswered points from the Bison of North Dakota State. Adam Keller, who has four toes on his kicking foot, on for the point after. The pendulum swung toward North Dakota State in that second quarter, and it has not swung back. North Dakota State, their fans have come en masse to Frisco, Texas. And the Bison, a little more than 13 minutes away from celebrating a third consecutive FCS championship. Craig Bowl, Wyoming bound. They'll be the Cowboys' next head coach, taking a lot of the staff with them. 35 to 7, the Bison have scored 28 unanswered points. Ryan Dowling from his own two. And Dowling tripped up as he crosses the 15-yard line. Sunday on ESPN, it's the MAC against the Sun Belt. Ball State, Arkansas State in the Go Daddy Bowl that comes your way Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. This could very well be Terrence West's final game for Towson, there's some talk he could turn pro after his junior season. West has set the FCS single season record for rushing yards and total touchdowns. Peter Athens to the air, finds Andre Dessenberg at the 31 yard line. It's a first down for the Tigers. And certainly 
Towson needs to put the ball in the air right here. And this isn't exactly their wheelhouse, but I think Peter Athens is greatly underrated as a passer. Very good presence in the pocket, very good arm. Athens back to the air. That's caught again by Dessenberg. That's on far sideline. We mentioned this could be West's final game. Here's a kid who almost by chance ended up at Towson. Clemson was recruiting him, interested, never offered a scholarship. He tried to walk on at Maryland. And Ralph Friedgen was fired, and that never panned out. And a whistle blows before the play. There's a flag. Ball start. Offense number two. Five yards. Still second down. That's Derek Joseph going back to Terrence West. The Maryland situation didn't work out. He tried to walk on at Morgan State. Paperwork issue. So he was selling shoes for a while before finally walking on to Towson. And since he walked on to the Tigers, this program has taken off. Here's the blitz. Athens throws. Joseph hauls it in. Spun around by C.J. Smith. It's a gain of about eight. Carroll with more on Terrence West. Guys, we asked Rob Ambrose about Terrence West, and he said the best part of this running back is that he comes from a really tough neighborhood in Baltimore. He knew he needed to focus on his academics, and he's going back to where he's from to try to make a difference in the community and send that message to others. Bison bringing pressure incomplete intended for Dowling. Second down and 10. And I think his skill set translates really well at the next level. And you wonder why a kid in the SES level would come out early. But this is a Division I FBS player right here. He does so many things extremely well. And the wear and tear on a running back's body is one reason I think you make an exception to jump early to the next level. Athens over the middle, threads that one in. A gain of seven yards, it's Connor Frazier on the catch. You know, to your point, Kelly, West has been called the best running back prospect at the FCS level since Brian Westbrook at Villanova. And West said he'll address his future plans after this game. Towson still holding on to a thread of hope here. Athens back to Frazier, and he's across midfield. And you can see Peter Athens in this situation. is His throwing ability, he's very accurate. Actually has a, a pretty compact release as well. They haven't needed to do this type of thing very often because they have a guy named Terrence West in the backfield with it. I think Randall Harris, number 62, the right tackle, jumped that particular time. Prior to snap, ball start, offense, 62, five yards, still first down. That was Harris. And, you know, we talk about West's odyssey. Peter Athens has had quite the journey at Towson. He started his first six games as a true freshman in 2009, tore his ACL, missed all of 2010 recovering. Meanwhile, Towson finds another quarterback in Grant Elders, so... When Athens is ready to go in 2011, he's a backup. Saw action in just one game in 2012, and now in the FCS championship game. Screen pass to West, who's run out of bounds at the 40 by Carlton Littlejohn. There you see another aspect of what Terrence West brings to the table, the timing to know how to set up the screen well. You don't get out early, and you don't want to be late. A screen needs to be on time, and Terrence West just has a feel of the game of football. He also pass protects very well, so they will certainly like that at the next level. Athens to Dowling, and a nice grab by the UMass transfer. It's a first down for the Tigers. And not only a tremendous catch, but how about keep, keeping a foot in bounds? That ball was quickly taken down and out of bounds. Watch a quick release by Athens here. Boom, that ball is gone with some smoke on it. 
The awareness by Dallin at the other end to get one foot down. Athens to Frazier. And Connor Frazier, the hero of the semifinal win against Eastern Washington, picks up 14. It was Frazier who ran for the game-winning score with 17 seconds left in regulation against the Eagles up in Cheney. And Frazier played the entire second half as the quarterback. Cole Jurek back down on the field for North Dakota State. We'll step aside with 10.21 to go in regulation. BCS Megacast allows you to watch the BCS Championship eight different ways. You can watch the game on ESPN, on ESPN2 BCS Title Talk, ESPN News, BCS Film Room. Goal Line is your command center. ESPN Classic gives you all the sideline sounds of the game. And then on ESPN3, we've got the Spider Camp, Campus Connection, and hometown radio calls. Wow. Tenth play of the drive for Towson, which hasn't scored since the final play of the first quarter. That's floated up. It's caught by Brian Shepard, but he was out of bounds, so it's second down and ten. So no interception. And North Dakota State is bringing heat, not only because they know Towson has to throw the football, but particularly on the drive and they get into the red zone here, the pressure certainly increases on the quarterback. This Bison defense, second nationally in total defense, first against the run, top 10 against the pass. Athens under pressure, incomplete intended for West, third down and 10. Ryan Drevlo that time from his defensive tackle position, that's the second time Drevlo's gotten Fairly quick pressure onto the quarterback, Athens. Rob Ambrose looking on. What a job he's done turning this program around. In 2010, they won one game. In 2011, they made the playoffs. Ambrose, the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year winner. Here's the pressure. Athens. That's caught by Frazier somehow. And he's finally brought down by Brendan Pierre, a gain of seven. How about Connor Frazier? At the game-winning drive a, two weeks ago in the semis as the quarterback and then makes a spectacular catch right there, snatches the football in very tight coverage. Easy call here on fourth and two to go for it. Here's the blitz. Athens for the end zone, incomplete. Yes, incomplete. Frazier was the intended target. The Bison get it back with 9.22 to go. Their fans can sense it. North Dakota State is looking to join Appalachian State as the only team to win three consecutive FCS titles. App State did it from 2005 to 2007, 06. Kevin Richardson was the MVP, 07. Armonte Edwards threw for three scores. App State beat Delaware for its third straight title. And North Dakota State on the verge of joining that list. Youngstown State, Jim Tressel led the team to four titles in the 90s. And Georgia Southern has won six FCS titles. They went back to back three different times. Sam O'Jury uses the stiff arm. There is a flag way back at the 14-yard line as O'Jury gets out close to the 40. Personal foul, number 86. Lined up outside of tackle. Block back below the waist. That's half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. Backup tight end Taylor Nelson flagged. Brock Jensen and North Dakota State on the verge. Craig Ball looking on, I'm sure. 
He's trying not to think about it. These are his final minutes as the head coach of the Bison. He's been more than just the head coach. He's become really a, a popular figure in that Fargo community. And some of the fan base has rallied around for the past decade plus. Number 22, Sam Richard. Jury with a pickup of nine. Stop made by number 13, Delian Clark. Gain of seven for the Bison. Craig Bowl, three-time conference coach of the year. Looking to lead North Dakota State to a third straight national championship. On December 8th, he was hired as Wyoming's head coach, and that's probably been one of the most impressive things about this postseason run for the Bison. A lot of distractions that could have been an excuse for a slip-up with the coaching change on the horizon. Chris Kleiman, the defensive coordinator, will take over as the head coach. But this team's focus has been laser sharp. And their postseason run has been nothing short of dominant. And I think really for two reasons. I think the way the coaching staff handled it was big time. Because Craig Bull talked about, you know, his experience with Tom Osborne and Frank Solich at Nebraska when Tom Osborne was resigning and wasn't going to coach anymore. It was a smooth transition to Frank Solich. That was kind of his template for the way he wanted to do things and passing the baton to Chris Kleiman, and it worked extremely well, but also 24 seniors really set the tone for the way this thing was gonna go down the stretch. On third and seven, Jensen will keep it. And Jensen picks up a first down. Let's go down to Kara. Just more on Craig Bull and what he learned from Tom Osborne on how to have success. Number one, know who you are. Number two, play to your strengths. He said that the Bison, his goals have always been to be physical, be balanced, be disciplined. Some things will change in football, but he, like Tom Osborne, always hung on to the things that don't change. Yeah, Craig Bull, and speaking to him a few times, getting ready for this game, he mentions Tom Osborne and rarefied air and the influence that Osborne had on him as a person and a coach. And he actually reminds me dispositionally a little bit of Tom Osborne, that ability to be ultra intense but always poised. That's what you see out of Craig Bowl. And the interesting thing would be to see, you know, he's laid an amazing foundation in Fargo. Obviously, they're going to have their third national championship in a row. So can Chris Kleiman keep that going? That's going to be interesting to keep our eye on. Yeah, Kleiman currently the defensive coordinator, but he's been handling a lot of head coaching duties behind the scenes. He's in the process of putting a staff together. He's had to maintain the relationships with a lot of recruits as O'Jury picks up a couple. And I thought, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we were over in Fargo for the semifinal game, Cara Capuano, she asked uh, Chris Kleiman a, a very good question. What's your stamp going to be on the team? And Coach Kleiman didn't have an answer for it. Continuity might not be a bad thing. Yeah. You I might think... not need your own stamp, given the template that's in place that Craig Bull put in over the last decade plus. And that certainly will be easy to do on the defensive side sure you know he's the defensive coordinator now becoming head coach but it's the offensive side and it's all about recruiting their template for recruiting and recruiting the dakotas along with minnesota and wisconsin they always think they can get blue collar defensive and offensive linemen running backs and linebackers that's the foundation for the way they play football in fargo currently fourth down coming up for north dakota state as the bison closing in on a third straight FCS championship. Kleiman's going to start hiring assistants as soon as tomorrow. Craig Bull taking most of his North Dakota State staff with him to Wyoming. Good punt by LeCompte. Dowling lets it bounce. And you can tell there's almost an air of resignation on that Towson sideline. In some ways, that punt right there by LeCompte kind of frames this entire game. A 66-yard boot by LeCompte. Towson pinned inside its own five-yard line. The NCAA FCS Championship game is presented by 
Northwestern Mutual, proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA, and in part by DiGiorno. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. We take a look at today's Reese's perfect play, and this was the turning point in the game. A 7-7 game, Towson going for the lead, a blocked field goal, Colton Hegel had the block, Kyle Emanuel picks it up, brings it down to the five-yard line, and then Ryan Smith on the sweep goes in for the touchdown, 14-7, North Dakota State, and the Bison have not looked back. On the ground to Terrence West. He gets three on forward progress. We remind you after the game on ESPN3, it's post game coverage for today's FCS championship game. The trophy presentation plus interviews with the winning coach and the key players. You can watch it all on ESPN3 following the game. It's presented by Capital One. On second and seven. Athens from his own end zone. Underneath to West. West using the stiff arm and Terrence West run out of bounds after a gain of about six, third and short. The thing that's so impressive, Anish, about North Dakota State in this run is they do so many kind of hidden things well as, as champions do. They play so clean. I mean, their, their offense didn't turn the ball over. They did have a drop pass. Jensen hasn't gotten sacked. Their run game's efficient, and their defense just doesn't allow you to extend drives. But the window of opportunity against a champion is just so small. It makes you play so efficiently. And Towson Time did out. for a while, but couldn't finish Towson. it. First charge. Timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. Rob Ambrose calls a timeout, fourth and one for the Tigers. When you look at the entire context of Towson's season, no shame in losing to what is an all-time team. This North Dakota State team, three straight championships and a perfect season to cap the three-peat. But what Rob Ambrose has done at Towson, this was a nothing program when he got there. Three wins in his first two years. Now they've become a power in the Colonial, and they have staying power. This team is not going away. Rob Ambrose has built a program. He's put a foundation in place. And talking to him last night, he said one of the things he's going to do after the game, win or lose, approach Craig Bowl, pick his brain a little bit on building a program and what you have to do to get a foundation in place. On fourth down, Towson up the gut. And Athens gets the first down. Towson set a school record with 13 wins this season. Opened the year with a win against UConn. First ever win against an FBS school. And Terrence West has had an all-time season as Derek Joseph picks up five. You know, one of the nuggets that I heard this week in preparing for this game came from Craig Bowles about Rob Ambrose. And he said, you know what? I knew I would like him before I ever met him because of the way his team plays. And the way his team plays is repeatable. You know, it's a it's a very physical style on offense, ball security, and then a stingy defense that creates negative plays. I mean, that travels really well, and that's exactly what prompted this run deep into the playoffs and has them here in this game today. This was a team that was 9-0 on the road this season as Athens picks up a first down. Blitz coming. Athens goes down. Levon Perry with the sack. Perry had a fumble return for a touchdown in the semifinal win against New Hampshire. We talked about North Dakota State's defense comes in as the best defense at the FCS level. They don't allow you timeout. to run the football. North Dakota and State. Towson needed to run it and could have run it effectively. Charge timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. Only three times this Both season. Both teams have two timeouts remaining was Terrence West held under 100 yards. North Dakota State had only given up three 100-yard rushers all season. 
If you're wondering where that stands, West is at 99. <laughs> ACC basketball next here on ESPN2, Virginia and Florida State. All the post-game festivities can be seen on ESPN3. Grant Olsen into the game, and yes, a victory bath for Craig Bowl. These fans get it, some of the smartest and brightest and most passionate in all of college football. Has chance of three peak start cascading from the stands. Dessenberg takes it across the 30 yard line. North Dakota State will join Appalachian State as the only schools to win three consecutive FCS championships. Craig Bowl really built this North Dakota State program up. Attendance at the Fargo Dome at an all time high. And as you can see, these fans, they made the trip. It's about 1,100 miles from Fargo to Frisco. And they're not only motivated to travel like that, but they're well educated. They we are. saw that in the Fargo game a couple of weeks ago. Is they impact the game. No doubt about it. That is a tremendous home field advantage, but it's been an advantage for North Dakota State here today. This following has been very loud when they've needed to be loud. Their M.O. at the Fargo Dome is to make a lot of noise when the other team has the ball, and they are dead silent when North Dakota State has the ball. As Joseph remains on his feet, Finally brought down at the 49, a gain of 17. Towson not giving up, playing to the final whistle. Again, 145 to go in regulation. Complete post-game coverage on ESPN3. When we spoke to Craig Bull a few weeks ago, we asked him how this Bison team stacked up against the last two. And he said, the last two, they won. So until this team won a championship, that would be the ultimate measuring stick. But he said this was the most talented team he's had since coming to Fargo as the new head coach, Chris Kleiman, gets, I guess, uh, what would be an introductory victory shower. He hopes he's getting that next year about right. this side. Here's Terrence West. And he's brought down from his ankles a gain of five. Towson has actually outgained in North Dakota State for what it's worth, but a couple of key plays, a block kick, and an interception late in the first half swung this game. The Tigers, this will be their 74th play. The Bison have run just 48. Here's Frazier. He's to the 30, a gain of seven. Kelly, this North Dakota State team, we're talking an all-time team at the FCS level. Without a doubt about it, and that's the challenge for climbing. It's that three championship, national championships in a row, but then you lose essentially the entire coaching staff. You retain one coach, but you also lose the 24 seniors that have been the core of the run that you're just finishing right here this afternoon. To give you an idea how dominant this Bison team has been in this postseason, if the final score holds as it is right now, this would be the closest game North Dakota State has played in these FCS playoffs. Wins of 31, 34, and 38 in the three preceding rounds. First career catch or first catch of the season and also the first career catch for Sean Mooney getting to start at tight end for the suspended James Zobo. Towson continuing to go in the final 20 seconds. Here's the pressure. Athens down the sideline and that's broken up. 
by Zach Colvin. Second and ten. A lot of emotions on that Bison sideline starting to bubble. 24 seniors, a head coach, and most of the coaching staff on its way to Laramie and Wyoming. 16 seconds away from a three-peat. West spins away. He's still fighting and driven out at the 20-yard line. Brock Jensen, the winningest quarterback in FCS history. He'll punctuate his career with a third straight national championship. Six seconds left. Those eyes have got to be welling up. Athens to the air, and time runs out. North Dakota State has won its third straight FCS championship. Capuano down to the field with Craig Bowles. Third straight national championship for North Dakota State. How does this one compare to the other two, Coach Bowles? Well, they're all very special. Uh, this one was harder. Uh, you know, going against doing something three times, I can't say enough for our, our football team to resolve and focus along with that with our coaching staff. Also want to give a shout out to Coach Moore. Thank you, Jerry. You said that his message was achieve this as a team, and your seniors were possessed with perfection. They met every goal. How did that galvanized group do it? Well, it's hard to do. And you know, you can strive for perfection. You're not going to get it, but along the way, you're going to catch excellence. Your parents were here to watch you win this third straight national championship. The support of Bison Nation. How did all of them, including your folks, propel this? Well, you know what? Uh, we have a tremendous school, a great institution. We got the best fans in America, bar none. Thanks, Coach. Thanks a lot. Anish? A team for the ages, a season for all time. North Dakota State caps a perfect season with a third straight FCS championship. Your final score from Frisco, North Dakota State 35. 2007, the Bison champions again. What a last hurrah for the 24 seniors, Craig Bowl and his coaching staff that's headed to Wyoming. Trophy presentation on ESPN3. Now we send you to the studio. Steve Weissman and Andy Katz standing by. Great. Hey guys, this is Kara. Can you hear me? I got you, Kara. Great. So the way that this is, um, the potential plan down here is that, and my RF is cutting out. Is that happening to you guys?
like a coach up here. The ESPN3 Trophy presentation is brought to you by Capital One. We turn it over to the public address announcer at Toyota Field, Toyota Stadium. to direct their attentions to this end zone because I've never seen so many attentive faces ready to celebrate a third straight championship. As Chris already mentioned, we have NCAA President Mark Emmert here, as well Jeff Bourne, who's the committee chair for the NCAA Division I Football Championship and we're going to let him present the trophy to North Dakota State head coach, Craig Bull. Bison Nation wants to hear a few thoughts from Coach Bull about this third straight title. Am I right? <laughs> Coach, how does this one compare to the others that have been won by this team in now three consecutive years? Well, every year is special. And uh, the feats of not only uh, the current football players, but all in the past have been special. But what this group has done is truly remarkable. They were possessed with perfection and they were chasing excellence, and today, you know what? We got it, three-peat. During the postseason, we've talked a lot about this galvanized senior class, their leadership, not only leading you to perfection, but also leading you through potential distractions as you're getting ready to depart. Right. What is their leadership meant to this group? Well, there's not a more solid group in America, and they were fo focused, poised, and locked in, and. You know, the results show on the field. If there's a better football team in America, I sure haven't seen it right there. We want to take an opportunity now to introduce the game's most outstanding player. I don't think it will come as a surprise to the North Dakota State faithful that that honor goes to quarterback Brock Jensen. Yeah. Jeff Bourne presenting the Most Outstanding Player Trophy to the quarterback. 
once again shining on this big stage. Brock, I know I saw you getting a little bit emotional with teammates there. Culminating your career this way, what's that like? Man, I just want to first say, how about that Bison defense, though? <laughs> Damn! Hey. Hey, I just want to, I just want to thank God. This, I can't, you can't dream up anything like this. I mean, being a part of NDSU and and what we've done, and I'm just so blessed. And and I, I just thank the Lord. And I thank all my teammates and coaching staff. We, I mean, we're a part of something special here, and I'm just lost for words right now. I'm going to try you anyway. He talked about the leadership of the players. Give us a little bit more about Coach Bull and his entire staff and how they kept you all aligned on that goal. Hey, they are the best in the country, hands down. I'll, I'll tell anyone that. I'm telling the nation that right now. They're the best, the best in the nation, and we're, we're thankful to have them, and uh, this has been the best five years of my life. I work in the Southeastern Conference primarily, and I would say there's another best in the nation right here in Frisco, Texas, and it's this fan base. What do you have to say to them, Brock? <laughs> that's, what, that's what it is, right there. That's exactly what it is. Hey, right there. You can't explain that. It's something, something special here that we got within this team. Uh, NDSU, the fans, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Congratulations, Brock. Congratulations, Coach Bowl, and congratulations to the entire galvanized North Dakota State Bison. Third straight championship in a row, just the second team ever to accomplish that feat. Now we want to have everybody draw their attention, please, to the video boards. We actually have some special messaging for Craig Bull from his players. You'll want to listen. Yeah, I got you. For Kara Capuano and Kelly Stoff, Renee Schroff, we want to thank you for watching the NCAA FCS Championship Trophy Ceremony presented by Capital One. Congratulations again to the North Dakota State Bison, the second team ever to win three consecutive FCS championships joining Appalachian State. And Brock Jensen, the most valuable player of the FCS championship game for a second consecutive season.